Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here. Welcome back to the railway for quite a major video. Today I'm going to attempt to build my new steam locomotive for the very first time. During a previous video, I walked you through the design process for a new engine I've been working on. And that was of course this, the LNWR Problem Class, which was a single wheeler from the 1800s. And if you're interested in the ins and outs of the design, I'll pop a link to that video up there for you. Today's video though is obviously going to be quite different, it's going to be more practical rather than theoretical, because for the first time I'm going to be trying to assemble all of these parts together. As you can see, everything has been printed, and I will show you a few close-ups now of some of the various parts, some of the more impressive ones. Look at the bodies here, they've all come out really well by the way, very very happy with how this is all printed. One of my favourite parts is this piece, the cab detail part, obviously I need to add a lot of the details to this, but you get the picture, it's looking pretty decent. So this video is going to be a real challenge because obviously this is a brand new kit and at the moment this has never been assembled before. So this is all going together for the first time. I've got to learn how best to assemble this kit so that once I do another version of this model, which I've painstakingly painted, I know what I'm doing and I can assemble it properly without making any silly mistakes. So today's video is the one where I should be making the mistakes but learning from them and I'm obviously not going to be that careful to make sure this is super neat and tidy and high quality. I just need to understand the kit and how it goes together. So I'm really excited, I'm not even sure what my first step is going to be yet, but let's go to the bench and let's get started and hopefully at the end of this video I will have a fully assembled and working LNWR problem or lady of the lake class. Okay, I think I've decided on a starting point. So one of my first aims is going to be to get the two main parts of the loco body together and then obviously I can start adding the various details to it. But there are one or two details that I want to add to this running plate before I fit it to the loco upper body. So I'm going to do those first of all. And here are those pieces, these are the sanding rods that connect up to the sanding boxes. I think these are going to be easier to fit while the running plate is separate. So let's give this a try. A dab of glue in the locating hole, a very tiny dab, and then a tiny little bit on the splasher. And then with my tweezers I should be able to lower that part into the right position. Okay. So there we go, very small pieces there, and there's another part that goes on the back of the splasher, but that connects to the loco cab, so I'll have to do that later on. So, let me try now and fit the loco running plate to the body. Now I have to do this carefully so as not to dislodge those parts that I've just fitted, but uh, if it happens, it happens, this is all in the name of experimentation. The running plate lugs in at the front of the loco body, like this and then the rear of the body should clip down into the back of the running plate, as you can see it does. And then there is a screw at the back as well, which holds it together firmly. So let's glue it and screw it. Okay, and then while that glue dries, there's my screw hole at the back, and I need one of my shortish screws, and that will make sure that these two parts are then firmly fitted together. And my plan is never to separate these two parts. These two parts are then just going to form the body. And uh, if I'd ever need to remove the body from the loco, this entire piece will be removed in one go. And uh, as you can see, that screw goes in quite nicely. There we go, looking good. Now I've got a right pain in the neck because I need to fit the other end of these sanding levers, which poke through a hole in the back of the cab and then rest on the splasher again. I'm not proud of this bit of design, but uh, it seemed to me the only way I could do this. So let's try. Okay, so into the hole and onto the splasher. All right, great stuff. Okay, on to the next. Here's the next piece. This is the little valve that goes onto the side of the boiler, I guess. Yeah, you can see what a small piece this is going to be. Let's try and get it on. Glue in the hole. Let's try and get it in there. Oh, that's not so bad. Yep, yeah, that's gone in. 
All right, moving on. Here's a plot that I'm not looking forward to. You probably can't even tell what this is, but this is one of the cab window frames. I'm gonna try and fit it and let's see what happens. So that's gotta go into the cab like that. Yeah, that should work. So there you have it. That's what the window frames look like. I think they might be best as a single part in future. Um, so I might make that change for the final design, but for the prototype they're in. So hopefully that will at least give an idea of what this should look like. One thing I know I have forgotten on this was to include the fitting holes for the cylinder drain cocks. So I've actually already identified that issue and added that onto the next version of the design. So this prototype won't have cylinder drain cocks, but the final one will. So that's just something to bear in mind. So I think next I'm gonna focus on the sub-assemblies so that I can put them all together and let the glue dry before I need to fit them to the main model. So of course we've got the cab detail piece here and also the buffer beam. Let's start with the buffer beam. And the first parts to go on here are going to be the buffer housings, which are separate from the main buffers so that they can be painted separately. And I think that will look really, really good. So there's the first buffer housing then into position. Oh, these look awesome. And I'm also noticing, thanks to the precision of the resin 3D printing, that all of the fit holes I've designed are actually the right size. You know, I'm not struggling to fit any pieces into too small or too larger holes. Uh, so that's pretty good. That's making life a lot easier. And I guess I can go straight away and put the buffers in. Another thing I've realized is that I forgot to print the rear buffer beam for the tender. So it's not a big deal because obviously I can test all the buffers and the chains and everything with this buffer beam, but uh, I can't test the fit of the rear buffer beam to the tender, which is you know a bit spooky. Um, so I'm gonna have to hope that that will work on the final version. So here we go. Oh, pulled one of the buffers housings out. That's because I didn't allow ample time to dry, but never mind. Okay, more concentration needed. Let's try this with the other buffer. I'll be a good lad and I'll use the tweezers for this one. Okay, there we go. You didn't see me mess it all up just then. It's all gone swimmingly. All right, one more piece for the buffer beam, and that is the chain in the middle. And I'll, I'll show you a close-up on one of those parts because they are incredible. Hopefully that's in focus. So it's a single piece, prints vertically, so it's self-supporting. How awesome is that? Let's get it onto the buffer beam. All right, tiny bit of glue, and here comes the part. All right, there we go. I'm not gonna lift this up to show you right now because I want the things to dry, but that looks good. I'm gonna move that to one side and let's do the cab detail. Onto the cab detail piece then, and this is just very simple, two parts. You might not even be able to see them here, but we've got a regulator, which is so small, and a reverser wheel, which is a bit more sort of manageable. So let's try it. Let's get the regulator glued on. And the reverser wheel. Let's just put a bit of glue on that locating peg and let's see if that fits on. Yeah, it does. Let's try and get that level. Okay, there we go. That should be the cab detail ready to dry. So, back to the loco body then. And there are some cylinders that need to be set up on the bottom here. So, I really don't want to leave that too late. I really don't want to fit too many fragile details to the top of the body so that when I come to flip it over to fit the cylinders, uh, it's all too fragile. So I'm just gonna pop a couple more details onto the body and then I'm gonna show you what the situation is with the cylinders. So first of all, let's put the reverser rod on and that's just a tiny little piece. And this could be a bit awkward to fit, so let's see if it is. There we go. So the way I've fitted that is I've not put any glue on it and I've just tried to wiggle it into position and then I'm gonna add a bit of glue to the underside of the loco and uh, glue it in from there. All right, final detail then, handrails. And as I mentioned in the last video, these handrails are actually FDM 3D printed. So the old sort of melting plastic style and this has made them a bit more handleable. Look, I'm flexing, bending those. They won't break quite so easy. So let me put some glue onto the locating holes and let's fit the first handrail. Okay, there you have it. A Little bit fiddly that, but uh, it fits, that's the main thing. And um, yeah, I'm quite happy with the way it fits as well. So let me just slap the other one on, or rather no, let's 
gently place the other one onto the side of the body. It's all about the right attitude. All right, there we go, starting to come along. And I think now I really must move on and do the cylinders. I'm not looking forward to that, but it's necessary. So let me show you the crack. Right, so I apologize that you're probably not going to be able to see very well for this section, but that's kind of the point. These three parts here are very, very tiny. They're hard for me to see, and yet they've got to be assembled. So what we've got here is the connecting rod for the problem class. This is just one side. We've got the crosshead, which is the part of the sort of cylinder that moves forwards and backwards. You know the one. And then we've also got the tiny little peg which goes on the back of the crosshead, which holds it all together. Hopefully that makes some sense. So what I've got to do is assemble all of this together and also fit the piston to the crosshead. And to do that, I've got a diagram, which shows me all of the rods that I need. So these 12.1 millimeter rods, they are the rods that go through the chassis to hold the gears. These 13.2 millimeter rods are the pistons, that's what I need. And then these are the actual other rods that hold the crosshead in place. So I need two of these 13 millimeter rods. So I've got a big length of rod here. It's a one millimeter rod. The first step is to mark out using this black square here, which is a guide. Oh, it's a rectangle, but never mind. Who's being pedantic? And that will mark out the rough length of the piece. I'm using a sharpie, so there's obviously nothing precise about this step. And I'm actually going to give myself a little bit more than I will actually need. And that's so that I can creep up to it with a file later on and get it to exactly 13.2 millimeters. So there we go. I now need to go and cut this rod. And if anybody knows of a better slash more effective way of cutting a rod than this, please do let me know. I am looking for advice on that. But uh, this is the way I've been doing it. And now it's just a case of filing it down, occasionally measuring it with the calipers to see where I'm at, and then stopping once I reach 13.2 millimeters. So I'll do these. There are one, two, three, four, there are six rods I'm gonna need at the moment for this. I'm gonna make all of these now, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so all the pieces are cut. I now have a piston, which I'm going to glue to my crosshead. There we go, those are together, great. And now the connecting rod goes over the little peg on there and I'm going to glue this stopper on the top. It's a frightfully complicated little assembly but I did test this previously on the, on the last prototype and it did work so I'm hoping that this will be a success. And here we are on the loco end where I've got a couple more rods that I've already cut to length and these will fit into the loco body here. That's the other one in. And then there's a keeper piece that goes on the end of there, but obviously I can't put that on until the cross heads are on. So let's have a go at doing that. Okay, so there we go. We now have the rods attached to the loco, which has made the loco quite fragile now. So I'll have to be very careful from here on in, but uh, yeah, that's a success. Right, it's time to pick up the pace then. Let's now get the rest of the loco detail in place. We're gonna start with the small handrail on the front of the smoke box, which threads through the holders. Next, I've got some cab controls that need to go in because these are not fixed to the main cab piece that I've already assembled. And these are awkward. These are really awkward because they've got to go down inside the cab like this. Okay, next we come to the smallest part of the loco, and I'm gonna try and show you this. There it is, on the end of the tweezers. Almost ridiculous, really, but uh, let's try and get it on. Okay. Yep, that's gone on, great. I've already broken the whistle off inside the body, so I can't fit that on this particular test. I put it in to check that it would fit and then couldn't get it out again. So it's not gonna be a problem, but I can't demonstrate that on this particular video. Uh, let's now put in, I guess we can go ahead and try the safety valve arrangement. And for this, I'm just gonna sand off the bottom. So this will just make sure that the piece is a good fit. 
and there are no sort of lumpy bits on the bottom from where it was supported. Big piece of glue down here because it won't be visible. And with that, let's put the dome on, which fits there. Very nice fit, actually. So, little glue, that should go on too. Okay. Great. Now, I'm trying to think about what else is left. Right, let's go on with some of the cab detail wheels that go on top of these little posts that I fitted in a second ago. And then I'll show you a close-up so that you can see where we're at. All right, let me try and show you that then. So here's where I'm at. Obviously I need to work on getting this dome to print a little bit better, but I've already made some modifications to that. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the detail is really coming to life. And I think now I can probably move on and put the cab detail piece in place. Okay, and there's the cab detail piece maneuvered into position. So I think with that, the loco body is pretty much done. Let's now move on to the chassis. All right, so there you have it. We've got the pickups for the wheels poking out the sides, which obviously look awful at the moment, but they'll be tidied up. And then I've got a couple of wires at the back here, which will eventually go to the tender, but obviously I've not started working on that yet. So now let's start putting some gears in. So we've got the main motor gear. So now that the gear is roughly in place, I'm going to drop the peg that holds that gear into the chassis and try and get it to go through the center of the gear. There we go. So three more gears to go and they only get harder from here. I'm not gluing these gear shafts in right now because I'm hoping to reuse these gears on the final version of the design. Obviously though, they will be glued in because I don't want them to move once these pegs are in place. And because a lot of these shafts are quite loose, I'm just going to pop a bit of blue tack on the ends just to stop those from coming out. This will not be a feature of the final model. Okay, so all the gears are in. I'm now gonna move on quite quickly and start the wheels. So here goes the main driving gear. So, gears mounted to axles. Obviously, because I'm trying to create a quality model to an extent, I'm putting bearings onto these shafts. And then I'm going to show you how I'm gonna be putting the wheels together. So we've got the wheels themselves, which need to be sanded down on the back just to make sure there are no remnants of any of the supports still on them. And the cured resin is brilliant to sand down. Very, very easy. Not like uh, the PLA, which uh, is really hard. Let's just check that these are going to fit snugly onto the tyres and then I will glue the tyres on. In fact, that might not even be necessary because they are quite tight which is great, thanks again to the accuracy there of the 3D printer, which is really, really good. And then one thing that I think will be easiest to fit now will be the screw threads for the loco crank pins. So they fit into the backs of these wheels. Ah, oh, everything's just such a great fit. Look at that, all just fits perfectly. Oh, that's such a thrill, <laughs> which is also incredibly sad, but, now it's time to gauge these wheels. So I've put some epoxy resin into the holes in the center of the wheels and I've mounted the wheels and the axle into my gauging device, which I've used before. And if I clamp this in the vise at exactly the right level, I should be able to push both of these wheels onto the axle very precisely and also straightly so that there is no wobble. That's the most important thing. And then what I need to do is find my calipers and use those to keep an eye on where we are in terms of gauge. So at the moment, we are at 17.6 millimeters and we're looking for about 14.3. Now I've used a uh, long curing epoxy resin, which means I've got hours and hours before that goes hard. But once these are gauged correctly and then left, they should be fixed at that position. This time I've designed the gauging tool to have two different size of wheel into it so that I can gauge both my large drivers and the small non-driven and tender wheels with the same tool. And obviously this is the same design that I've used on all of my other locos. It's just a case of swapping out the wheels from the middle of it. So time to do the smaller trailing wheels. Make sure this is lined up well. 
This is one of my favorite inventions because I had so many problems with wobbly wheels and this solves all of them. That's good. That'll do it. Okay, things are coming along fantastically. Let's now get the driving wheels into position. So, in they go. I'm not sure whether this will be the sort of final time I put these in. They might have to come in and out for other reasons, but if possible, I now want to get the base keeper in so that I can adjust the pickups so that they make good contact with the driving wheels here. There, wheel still free to turn? Yes, very. Right, let's get both sets of wheels in. And for now, I can only screw in the top part of this base keeper because the other screw at the back goes through to the loco body. So that's fine, that should hold it for the time being. Gears working? Oh, very nicely, look at that. And we'll put the front wheels in. Those are the non-driven wheels and they have their own base keeper plate. Screw threads seem to be working nicely. Obviously the screw threads are all actually 3D printed. Okay, yeah, they're still loose, which is good. And now it's gonna be a case of adjusting the pickups. All right, now then we have yet another big moment and that is fitting the motor. So in that goes, nice precise fit right there. There we go. And I'll solder that motor into place. So everything's in, the motor is soldered. I'm now gonna have a go at fitting the internal weight, which I have die casted. It's not a pretty piece, but it's gonna be hidden inside the loco, uh, so it shouldn't matter. So the die cast weight is going to go inside the loco body like so. And now I'm going to try inserting the loco chassis. Now I'm thinking I should have left a lot of that detail on top of the loco boiler until after this step, because I think I've just broken the regulator off. So that's fine. That's useful information, I think. And then it's a case of connecting up the connecting rods All right, that's on. I'm also going to now apply the front buffer beam. And I think that should be the loco complete. <laughs> it looks crazy, doesn't it? Right, so I've got to now move on and look at the tender. So the first step in putting the tender together is going to be to obviously insert the wheels here into the chassis. Now these wheels are awkward to fit because they clash with the brake rigging on the tender. Now, once they're sort of fitted firmly in position, they don't clash, but while I'm trying to fit them, uh, yeah, it gets right in the way. So it's a case of trying to get the wheels past the brake rigging without destroying it. And then obviously once they're pushed down, they can spin freely without touching the brake rigging, which is great. And then let's see whether the base keeper is going to fit properly and by the looks of it it does do which is perfect that's really really good and now i am going to fit some pickups onto the base so that i can get the tender wheels to pick up so i'll go and do that and i'll be back in a second okay the pickups are soldered on so now i need to thread them into the tender chassis okay let's screw the base on and that should hold all of this firmly in position and now it's just a case of adjusting these pickups so that they touch the wheels. The next task is going to be to connect the loco and tender together, at least temporarily, so that I can wire the two sets of pickups together. Okay, and those two should snap together like that. And now I can turn these over and off camera, I will just solder those wires in place. Okay, that is good. I think now then I can put the tender body on. Um, yeah, you'll notice I had a little breakage here as well. That was when I was taking the supports off. So I'm not gonna be able to fully assemble the tender because of that, but I'll make sure there's no damage to that part on the final version of the model. So tender body on, 
let's flip this upside down and put in the screws. So I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get these screws in because uh, some of them have to go quite near to the brake rigging and unfortunately there wasn't much I could do about that. I'm hoping that I've left enough room for it to be at least possible, if a little bit annoying. Shouldn't be an issue. Although I think I did just break some of the brake rigging there, so maybe it is an issue. Right, okay, that is the tender body attached then. So, now we can go ahead and fit a few of the details in. One of them is the wheel that goes onto the tender brake. Okay, good. Next, I'm going to put in the tender handrails, which look like this. Great, and now the other handrails at the very front of the tender. Okay, well, that was quite easy. Lamp brackets on the back of the tender into the hole. There we go, we got lamp brackets. I guess we also need the uh, coal load, so let's bung that in. And at this point, I would also obviously be inserting the rear buffer beam onto the model, but Unfortunately, like I said, I uh, forgot to print that. <laughs> um, all the parts I did remember, not that one. So uh, yeah, that'll have to be next time, unfortunately. But I think that might be pretty much it. I obviously need a coupling for the rear of the Loco. I think that's it. I think we have everything on here now. So let me give you some close-ups in just a second, show you how it looks. And then of course, we'll get it onto the track. So there you have it, the LNWR problem class all together for the first time, or at least almost all together. The final model will of course have a rear buffer beam and it's also going to have guard irons at the front, that sort of thing. But for the most part, it is now complete. And that was not too bad at all. I'm really pleased with the simplicity of that build. It was long and time consuming, but there was nothing too complicated about it, which is great. I'm also incredibly happy with the way this looks. This has to be the best looking model I think I've ever designed. It's going to be a better finessed model when I do the final version. I'll be better removing all of the supports and such. You can see some underneath the cab here. So all of that will be addressed on the final build. But this build does everything I want it to. It looks fantastic and things are looking good mechanically. But does it work? Let's find out. So there she is, my first ever resin 3D printed locomotive down onto the track. And I have to say, I love this. I am so pleased with the way this is looking now that it's down onto the track. And I can only imagine what this is going to look like when it's fully decorated up. I can only hope that I'll be capable of actually doing that justice because I really want to see this thing finished. Anyway, anyway, enough waffling. Does this loco work? Let's see. It moved off pretty nicely there. Yep, I think it's going to need a run-in, definitely. And uh, this is a bit of an experiment for um, resin gears, actually. But uh, yeah, for a first run, that's not too bad. Is it any good at crawling? Obviously, the gearing is a little bit questionable in here. So is it really able to crawl? Let's see. Again, this will probably have to be fully run in before it gets better. But let's see. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I'll settle for that, folks. I think given the gearing I've got in this loco, I will certainly settle for that. Uh, it seems to be struggling a bit in reverse, doesn't it, actually, with a bit of wheel slip, if anything. Or is that maybe just that section of track? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, let me show you the higher speed then. I've got some coaches set up behind this. Uh, those are some of the Hatton's Genesis LNWR coaches. Um, but I'll move those out the way so that I can just do a run past at 50. You ready? It's quite speedy by the looks of things. Here we go. <laughs> so actually when you look at the way it's actually geared I would have said that slow speed performance is really really good I mean we've seen some pro models that are worse than that so yeah not concerned about that at all right does the coupling work is this loco going to be able to haul something let's go and find out gosh it's yeah it's struggling a lot in reverse I'm going to have to really run this in in reverse because it's Beautifully smooth forwards, and don't get me wrong, I'd prefer it to be that way around. But, um, yeah, it seems to almost wheel slip and get a little bit stuck going reverse. So, there's certainly some things to look at, but, yeah, for now, let's go and couple up to the coaches. Of course, the only issue with it not being brilliant in reverse is that it makes coupling a bit of a, a faff. 
Um, so there's something to look at there, that's for sure. Um, hopefully, if I get really lucky, it will just be a case of running this in and it will get better. Uh, but if not, you know, this is a good time to discover it so that I can fix it. But forwards, it's okay. So here we go. Let's do a gentle start. Oh, it's such a great performer forwards. How can it be so different? All right, off she goes. Right, has she got enough grunt to make it up the incline? Hmm, bit of a slowdown on the curves. But incredibly, all the wheels have stayed on the track. Incidentally, the front set of non-drivers, I'm going to make a slight modification to those before I do the final version, because I think the contact area between that axle and the chassis needs to be smaller, because it's getting stuck occasionally. Um, but that's just me being a perfectionist, I guess, because it's not actually getting stuck on the track. But all in all, yeah, it's a lovely runner. I think there's definitely promise in this. I think, actually, it's the best running early prototype I've ever made. So, again, I think that bodes well for the final version. Speaking of the final version, that will hopefully, fingers crossed, and there's such a lot of work to do before I get there, that will be the next thing you see of this project. <laughs> so, enjoy this while you can. Hopefully, I will be able to improve on this with some paint. And hopefully it won't all go horribly wrong. That always makes me very nervous. But we will see how that goes. Thank you so much for watching. Please do comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you've got any tips on how this should be decorated, please do send them to me because I would be very grateful for that. For now, though, again, thank you for watching. I will let this loco run in now. And I'll see you again very, very soon. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.